2023 is here, which means it's time to take a look at the latest rankings for the 2023 NHL Draft. We discuss that and more today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, you can find every piece of content that Lockdown Wild has to offer on your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. On today's episode, Gabe Foley rejoins us to discuss his latest rankings for the 2023 NHL Draft, and we will look at risers and fallers and a few finds as well. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and we continue getting the band back together here in 2023 as Gabe Foley of Recruit Scouting is back to take us through the latest NHL draft rankings. And uh, I'm just going to go out on a limb, Gabe, and assume that since the last time we had you on, absolutely nothing has changed, and it just was a copy-paste of your most previous rankings. That is exactly true. At least for number one overall, that's been the easiest choice I have ever had to make because, uh, wow, Connor Bedard. I mean, I, I was ready to say it in October, but we got to pull out the G word here. Connor Bedard is looking generational. I've seen a few people say, no, he's not going to be McDavid. He's just going to be Austin Matthews. And to that, I say, Austin Matthews is Still incredible. Austin Matthews might have the bid for the greatest maple leaf of all time um, at at whatever age he is, because Lord knows their franchise isn't rich. Um, so copy and paste for, for one. And you know what? Two and three sa- stayed the same for me as well. Adam Fantilli still at two. Matt Vemichkov still at, at three. The rest of this, Seth, I got to say, it's been a bit of a mess. Um, <laughs> as you mentioned... I will be dropping my top 50 here soon. Those will be coming out in the form of an article, which I don't do very often, but I thought I'd really give everyone an insight into what I'm seeing when I see these players play and why it places them where they do. The article is coming out to about 6,000 words as my last few pieces have, Um, but I think that that all really serves the purpose of showing you an in-depth look at each of these players. I don't expect everyone to read all 6,000 words, and I am impressed by whoever manages to, um, but you'll be able to look and find your favorite players in my first round and see what I think of them from how how they process the game and what they do well to the technicalities and how I can see how they feel on the ice. Where's you know, how they feel on their edges. What do they feel like in terms of getting weight into their knees, their hips, their feet, just all those little things um, I've really been able to capture uh, in this article. So I'm really excited for that. It should come out in the next few days. I'm hoping for a Sunday or a Monday release um, pending a few different things. Um, And Seth, if you'd like, I'd be happy to just give you an overview of the class. This is, as many people are saying, the year of the forward. I don't have a single defenseman in my top 11. Um, And throughout the first round, it's largely forwards dominating the group. But that doesn't mean that there are no defensemen in the class. In fact, I would challenge the idea that this is the year of the forward. And I would say that this is the year of underappreciated positions. You are finally going to be able to draft a right-handed defenseman and a goalie in the first two rounds. Uh, In the first round alone, I have uh, three different right-handed defensemen um, and only one left-handed defenseman, kind of speaking to how it is the year of the forwards. But I also have one goalie in my first round and three in my second round. And I'll say quickly that only two of those goalies uh, in 
are in my top 50. The other two fell past my top 50, but still remained in my top 64. But nonetheless, if you're a team like the Minnesota Wild, who don't really need a star piece, but more need guys to flesh out the lineup, this is the year for you. We've had a ton of great talent, all of it emphasized by the World Juniors, and it's really allowed us to see guys like Axel Sandin Palika, David Reinbacker, uh, Trey Augustine, you know, these studs from underappreciated positions really dominate their way into the mainstream conversation. So um, certainly an exciting draft to be uh, a part of. I think this is going to be a big year for teams like the Wild who don't need uh, one big piece. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Certainly plenty more information to come on the class. Uh, once this article releases, um going to be able to see everything your heart desires, at least from my point of view. All of the rankings chaos that, uh, All of that it. we can expect. So, well, uh, good to hear because uh, it, it is a situation where I'm going to be keeping an eye a little more on kind of where where different things play out when the Wild get to their um, their respective picks, which I hope are Low. later. Give me later. 32. Yeah, give me give me 32 or, or give me death. Um, but... You know, the thing that I like, too, is players whose stock takes a huge, you know, huge increase. You're riding up the hill on the roller coaster, and then there may be some other players that are are coming down. And so let's discuss risers and fallers. We will take a look at some names who have been making noise in good and bad ways as we continue our look at the 2023 NHL draft on today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. And if you, like me, are trying to get your 2023 started eating a little healthier without sacrificing the taste, because let's be honest, that's the biggest thing, the biggest detractor for me is sacrificing taste for the sake of eating healthy. But I promise you, Built Bar does not do that. Well, why? Because for starters, Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. 100% real chocolate. I'll say it again to uh, to hammer the point home. 100% real chocolate. Plus, check these amazing flavors out. Churro, delicious. Peanut butter brownie and coconut almond as well. So you're getting amazing tasting built bars, but you're also getting those incredible 130 calories and only 4 grams of sugar packed with over 17 grams of protein. The best part? We've been talking about how you can get Built Bars at Built.com for a while. Now, you can head to your local Walmart or Sam's Club to get them in person as well. So either head to Built.com or your local Sam's Club or Walmart, grab yourself some Built Bars today, and get your 2023 started deliciously with Built Bar. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out Locked on Vikings as we gear up for Sunday's game against the New York Giants. Uh, Luke has everything that you could possibly want gearing up for the game. And, of course, Locked on Sports Minnesota as well with Ron Johnson and Superior Sports Talk. So make sure you check all of those out as we watch the Vikings tangle with the Giants on Sunday. Seth Topol and Gabe Foley continuing to discuss the 2023 NHL draft. Gabe, if we talked about the Vikings, I, I think we could find nine or 10 hours to do just that. So we'll, we'll go to risers and fallers in draft rankings here recently. Who have been some of the guys that have uh, caught your eye in a positive way? And who are some of the names that have struggled to the point that you uh, kind of, kind of going yikes. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, we could talk about the Vikings until the game happens. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad you plugged Luke and the great work that he does um, over on Locked on Vikings because, oh, at least more positive than I would be right now. But 
I digress. Risers and fallers. Let's start off with the negatives, the fallers this year. It's been a weird year. Um, usually there's a really consistent string of popularity in the prospect world that bo boosts kids up draft rankings or knocks them down a few pegs. We haven't really had that this year. It's all kind of coming together right now as people release their winter rankings. So very suddenly, we've seen Callum Ritchie and Cameron Allen just stumbling their way down the first round and in some cases outside of it. In fact, I have Cameron, Cameron Allen, excuse me, ranked 35th in my upcoming rankings, and I have Callum Ritchie at 23. These are both guys who, at the beginning of the season, we thought could be top 10 picks. And in digging through what's causing this massive fall in their stock, I'm really finding out that it's the fact that they're not living up from their performances at the Holinka gretzky Cup. Um, both played really well at their tournament, but have had a bit tepid of a season so far. Uh, I think Callum Ritchie is an experience especially interesting player to watch because he has all the tools to be an explosive, really high energy playmaking center. But instead of opting for that, he's opted for a really calm, reserved, slow, slow paced two way style of play um, that really focuses on stopping play in the defensive zone and trying to build plays and build momentum with clean breakouts and movements through the neutral zone. That's a trait we usually don't see in OHL players, but it's one that, honestly, I'm kind of here for. He's certainly fallen in my rankings, going from 6 all the way down to 23, kind of showing my skepticism on his ceiling at this point. But to see a player so um, drastically change their style over the course of a season it is really interesting, especially when you're opting for that defensive reliability. Um, and so while Richie is 23 in my rankings, certainly a player that I'm interested to see. Another note that I want to add on Callum Richie, Cameron Allen, Colby Barlow, who is another uh, faller for some, risers for other, and really any OHL player this year, is that we all have to remember that a lot of these Canadian OHLers lost their U16 season or lost their first season of juniors to COVID. So a lot of these kids look underdeveloped. They looked raw. They look like they're still trying to find their way in juniors, which is not something we normally see at this age level. But you know what? That's okay. It's understandable. It makes sense. They lost a whole year, probably the most valuable year of their careers um, up to this point. And so they're still finding their way. We have to be patient with these kids. That's why I'm not dropping Richie outside of my first round, despite some tepid play. Um, there's potential there and his ability to change styles so quickly and so well, I think speaks to uh, that flexibility and fluidity that he has in his game. So if you were hesitant about some OHL players in this draft class, or if you're hearing some negative things, just know there's reasoning behind it, and patience is going to pay off with these kids. Now switching to the risers, I'm really happy to report out on this one today because it's largely the Americans in this draft class that are rising. Most notably, Will Smith, the hockey player, not the actor, <laughs> uh, is booming up draft boards. I've seen him in some top threes, some top fives, and he falls in at six for me on my personal rankings. Will Smith reminded me a lot of Tampa Bay Lightning first rounder Isaac Howard. Uh, Isaac Howard always looked like a player who had all the tools, but didn't really know how to utilize them. Uh, didn't really know what he wanted to be. I think he's finding his identity really well in his own personal journey. But Will Smith is a player who entered the year with all the tools, the speed, the shot, the awareness, the passing. I mean, I could go on and on. He's a beautiful player to watch. But entering the year, he didn't really know how to use them. Now he knows how to use them. He is the dynamite behind the U.S. National Team Development Program's U18 team this year. He drives play with so much intensity, plays a quick, flashy game uh, that stares defenders in the face and says, I'm going to beat you because I'm simply better at hockey than you. 
And then he does exactly that. It's great to watch. Uh, joining him on the risers list is his teammate, Ryan Leonard, who also entered the season with all the tools, but not a lot of knowledge on how to use them. In fact, Leonard was a bit disappointing entering the season uh, because he had a bad habit of not engaging in play if the puck wasn't on his stick. Uh, he is a shooter and a scorer at his truest, and he really took on the Alex Ovechkin identity of I'm going to stand here and you're going to find a way to get me the puck and I'll put it in the net and I'm not going to do anything else. And I think Ryan Leonard has finally realized that that isn't going to work which has led him to become probably the most dominant transition player on the national team. Um, it's a really interesting switch seeing a guy going or go from being admittedly lazy on the ice to now being one of the most dominant puck movers on the team, but it speaks to Leonard's potential and his ability to really do it all. Um, when I watch Ryan Leonard play, uh, I can't help but, just admire his tenacity and his determination to make things work. He might not be the best playmaker. He might not be the best skater or the most dazzling team member that you've ever seen. But Ryan Leonard is a scorer with arguably the best shot in this draft class. And he's finally boosted his game with ways to get into open space, ways to create for himself. Excuse me. If I could touch on uh, one other riser real quick, I'll briefly mention Maxime Sturbach. Now, I know he's not American, but Maxime Sturbach is a Slovakian playing in America, and so I am counting it uh, for my own pride, if nothing else. But Maxime Sturbach's a really interesting name, and one that is um, really confusing a lot of people around the, the USHL. Uh, Sturbach was previously Previously committed to an NCAA school, but revoked that commitment as his draft stock began to rise. And now everyone's kind of in a place of what's going to happen? What's Maxime Sturbach going to do? Is he going to go to college? Is he trying to go pros right away? Or is he going to go up to Canada and play juniors? It's a really interesting question for a really interesting player. Sturbach does not have the offensive gifts that we expect from defense defensemen at this age, at this time in hockey's, you know, evolution. Uh, Sturbach instead has that defensive reliability, that neutral zone dominance uh, that has made some of the greatest defensive defensemen in the NHL right now. Um, he's certainly capable of carrying the puck on his stick, and he showed that well during the World Juniors. But at the end of his day, uh, Maxime Sturbach's play is built on defensive reliability and being able to shut players down and turn that into quick opportunities for his team. So to be having such interesting conversations about a uh, unique defensive defenseman who I personally have at 19th overall in my rankings um, is really exciting. I don't know what to expect from Sturbach. Um, as much as I've tried to dig through all the sources that I have, it really seems that no one knows. And so not only is Sturbach a really exciting uh, Jonas Brodeen type of player to reference the wild yet again, um, with a really confident floor in pro hockey looming, um, he's one with a really exciting conversation around him. So we will see what Sturbach ends up doing uh, in the future. I've heard rumors of him going to uh, University of Minnesota Duluth, um, but I haven't been able to confirm that. So uh, certainly a fun name to follow throughout this draft class for those of you looking for someone to champion. Most definitely. Uh, we'll finish with the discoveries, the gems, or as we like to call them, the fines, Foley's fines, and uh, we'll continue with those as we finish today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Today's episode brought to you as well by BetOnline.net. They are your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From the NFL playoffs to college basketball to the NBA to the NHL, They've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. 
They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to their website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wilds. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Seth Topal joined by Gabe Foley, and uh, this is the discovery part of the show. The names that are maybe not on everybody's radar, but this is what we are uh, able to do with those that follow the draft as closely as Gabe does uh, to find some of the, the guys that are maybe a little off the radar. The Foley's finds. So, who do we have for this episode? I am so sad that I have to talk about him again, but thankfully he's a great person and a great player, so it, it takes away the relief a little bit. But the first Foley's find is a player that I've mentioned before on this segment, Teddy Townsend. Uh, Teddy Townsend is a high-energy, dynamic, playmaking center uh, who skates like the wind and passes even quicker. Uh, but unfortunately, Townsend's draft stock has taken a bit of a hit due to his decision to go back to Adena High School uh, this season instead of playing juniors hockey in the USHL. Because of that, a lot of people aren't aware of him, and admittedly, he's not playing with the highest quality team or opponents uh, that he could be. But don't get it mistaken, Teddy Townsend is legitimate. This is a really talented player, a uh, player with all the raw talent in the world. And while I think that phrase gets tossed around a lot, um, especially by me, quite frankly, um, <laughs> I think Townsend's a great representation of it. Just to find the speed, awareness, and playmaking ability uh, in such a young player is hard to do. Um, and so while I think Minnesota High School has clouded up his draft stock just a little bit, um, I think we're going to see him really explode over the next couple of years. And I may be mistaken in saying it, but I believe Townsend is a Minnesota commit as well. Uh, committed to UMN, obviously a part of the very famous Townsend family, which has grips all over Minnesota high school and collegiate hockey. And so another strong addition to what is a seriously tremendous Gophers team already. Uh, moving on from Townsend, the other Foley's find that I wanted to mention was Michael Hagens. Michael Higgins is another player who has really been clouded up, uh, largely thanks to the fact that his younger brother, James Higgins, is looking like the current frontrunner for first overall in the 2025 NHL draft by some standards. Uh, real quick on James Higgins, uh, he's incredible, currently playing for the National Team Development Program U17 team. And um, I've heard him referred to as the next Jack Hughes by many people within the NTDP. This is coming directly from people within the team. Um, and so certainly high praise for Hagens. And we can see how that level of praise would cloud up older brother Michael's conversation around him. But Michael Hagens is really a unique and interesting player. He actually transitioned from being a forward to a defenseman in 2020 and had to battle with a few complications uh, during those seasons, making this his first full year at defense. And he's doing it in the USHL with the Chicago Steel, despite getting, uh, I think, the second lowest ice time of any Steel defenseman. Higgins has managed to be one of the highest goal scoring defensemen on the team largely thanks to that killer instinct that he got while being a forward. He didn't lose any of that. He still has the drive to join the rush, the instinct of when to creep into open space, and the shot and quick release to get the puck behind the, behind the goalie before anyone on the ice is able to really pick him up. Um, and that's a really interesting trait to have in a defenseman. He's still learning a lot of things like how to defend the rush, positioning in the defensive zone, and how to use his physicality at the higher level, which is a must of any juniors or professional defensemen. Um, but 
to see a player transition from forward to defenseman, make that adjustment while playing juniors hockey is really impressive. We talk about um, unique and interesting talents a lot in the prospect world. And I think Michael Higgins is among the most interesting in this draft class. Now, is he a top 100 name? I don't know if I'd say that just yet, but he's a late round guy that your team can snag and have a really interesting piece to develop over the next five years. I certainly think there's an NHLer in Michael Higgins, and I know that his um, team around him are the type to uh, find ways to get him to where he needs to be. So certainly a lot to be excited for. And for those who want more information on Michael Higgins, you can look forward to an upcoming article breaking his play down as in-depth as I can. Um, that article won't be 6,000 words, but it will certainly push that 2,000-word mark um, as we discuss what is a, a fascinating player to me and a great example of how growth isn't linear at this age in hockey. Well, uh, it's always great to uh, hear how things are going for the 2023 NHL draft and no better person to uh, keep an eye on all the prospects. And I mean all the prospects than uh, Gabe of Recruit Scouting. Uh, make sure to give him a follow on Twitter at NHL Foley as we uh, will, of course, have more check-ins as we get closer to the actual draft in June, which hopefully I'll be able to be at in person. But we'll we'll see. Just yeah, I know it's a big that's a big nugget to drop here right at the start of 2023. But um, we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, that is going to wrap up today's episode of Locked On Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done. Uh, check out the Locked On NHL podcast, keeping you up to date with everything going on in the National Hockey League, free and available on your favorite podcast platforms, just like Locked On Wild. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Amazon Music. Follow us on social media, including TikTok, literally everywhere. And we've got content all throughout the week, full episodes, pre- and post-game content as well as other features as well. So make sure you check it all out so that you stay up to date on all things Minnesota Wild with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.